Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Bernouni. You're watching Israeli News Live here at Joppa Gate here. I wanted to bring to you a very interesting biblical insight from here, from Joppa Gate, on some very fascinating things from history, as well as, no doubt, things that may very well unfold in the very near future. In behind me here, Joppa Gate here, as uh, me and Pastor Paul Begley were talking about a little bit, a, little, a few moments ago on his show there, this is where General Allenby, back around 1915, something, I forget the dates on the war there, actually came here to this city during World War I and actually took Jerusalem without firing a shot. Now, what happened before he came up was the word went out that they were saying that Allenby is coming, but what happened was the mispronunciation of his name. Many of the people that came up were saying that Allah was coming but ended up being, it was Allenby. But all the people here ended up putting down their weapons. They did not fire a shot thinking it was Allah coming or possibly the Mahdi coming to this particular city. So they were afraid and they put down their weapons so Allenby was able to take over the city without firing a shot. But what was even more interesting was a friend of Allenby's had told him, almost as if it was prophetic, he knew that he would take Jerusalem. And he said to him, when you get to the city, Remember one thing, Mr. Allenby, that when you go to enter the city, there is a greater king coming, a king of kings, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ himself, that will enter into these gates here. He will be coming on his white horse. So in respects to the great king, I would dismount my horse and walk in. Well, when General Allenby actually came here, he did exactly that. When he got to the gate in behind me that you see here, he got off of his horse and walked into the city in respects to the King of Kings himself. Now, it's kind of interesting because Pastor Paul brought out a point that really got my attention. He made the statement earlier on his broadcast there, it may very well happen in the near future that this city may again, once again, be taken over without firing a shot. I think that that is something that's already been in the works and is happening. As we know, not far from here, from this place here, Mount Zion, which is actually to my left over here, Mount Zion, we know that in 2014, the Pope of Rome actually came there, held a communion service there in the upper room. Now in the Hebrew language, according to Obadiah in chapter six, or verse 16, chapter 1, Obadiah speaks about that they would come and they would drink upon his holy mountain, verse 17 declares that holy mountain to be Mount Zion. And it, it is in the Hebrew plural, in masculine form only, the first part of the verse there, which tells us that it would be only men participating in a drinking ceremony on Mount Zion. Well, Pope Francis, his own news agency, declared that it was only men from his delegation and men from the local community here that actually drank there on the mountain that day. Now what's fascinating, that fulfilled Obadiah's prophecy in chapter 1, verse 16. But also the Pope wore his triple crown sitting there above King David's tomb. And it was in 2013, if you remember right, that the Israeli government, without any referendum, gave an official seat to the Pope of Rome at King David's tomb. Giulio Meotti in Israel National News brought the article out, the breaking news that this happened. Well, he took up on that put on his crown, showing that not only did he have a crown at King David's tomb there, but that he was also the king, and as well blaspheming Yeshua, unlike Allenby, who dismounted his horse in respect to the coming of Yeshua, the Mashiach, the Christ coming on his white horse, he had respects to the king of kings, but the Pope of Rome had no respect. He went into the upper room, put on a crown as if he were the crowned Messiah, had that communion. The passage goes on to say, and the nation shall continually drink. It's in the, it is in the gender inclusive plural, which, which lets us know that there would be both men and women from people around the world that would participate in drinking on the holy mountain, Mount Zion. They did exactly that. In the weeks following, they actually were drinking wine, doing a communion service there, not only in the upper room, but they went down to the uh, tomb of David Israeli special forces removed the Jewish people from praying in their holy site for them, and they went and held a communion service there. Then as we come back to Jerusalem here recently, we find on the wall outside of the tomb there, we see on the rabbi's door there, the World Peace Center, a new placard had been placed by some 
new authority here in Israel, the, the uh, uh, Jewish Authority Center? Who is this? Who is this new authority? His brother Paul Begley, has he actually said something that is very prophetic in nature, not that he's prophesying, but prophetic in nature, that the city is being taken over without firing a shot. Even just when we came, we saw at the hotel, at the Wailing Wall, there was an entire Muslim group there being instructed there, both men and women, about things happening there at the hotel. I have never, in all the years that I've been here, been coming here, lived here, and both visited here, never seen Muslims there in the hotel. But we already know that they have promised by the new referendum that they're going to give back the hotel and everything is going back to the Palestinian Authority. Are they preparing for this takeover? It seems like Jerusalem is being conquered without firing a shot. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, reporting to you live here from Jerusalem. Shalom.